All right, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is for you. For me, it's morning time because afternoons are my morning. I'm not working today. Today is Tuesday. And next Tuesday, I'll be starting a Bible study. That's not what this video is about. Y'all know how I always start. That's not what this video is about. And I ain't home here the first. I took a shower last night, oiled it, and did whatever. But everybody's at home. Everybody's chilling. Y'all ain't got to get all dressed up special for nothing. And we are going to talk about the Lord a little bit here. Well, we're going to talk about the Lord a lot here. <laughs> Let's go on and say that. Um, some recent things happened. And I didn't realize I got coffee. Y'all, I got coffee. Um, I didn't realize that um, the... Uh, well, God kind of directs me past by doing things. And when I see that things are kind of like a pattern, I'm like, okay, Lord... It's like he's pricking my, that analytical side of my to go and check and see, what are you trying to say to me? Three unique events happened for me. Um, and I'm going to say three unique events happened for me. One of which, the first one was one of my kids, I call her my kid, like my daughter, I call her my little adopted daughter. She had changed up on her Facebook page, her profile pic. She'll know who she is if she watches it. And so when I saw it, I immediately was, you shouldn't have this on here. Okay, you shouldn't have this on here. And I hadn't talked to her yet because I'm always one who tries to, the Bible tells us we must be all things to all men. So how we approach things is very critical, especially in ministry and especially as Christians. I, I, I don't know saved, unsaved for her. I do know she does have... Um, some Christian fundamental understanding. But there's some other questions, issues. I'm going to get to that. So she had this picture of, and what it is, it's a person sitting in, um, and I'm going to call it the, the, the yoga, the meditation of the type, the chakras. All of that comes from Eastern religions. And we're going to get into that a little bit. So she has this person posing with the, you know, in this light blue kind of, which is supposed to be like your aura, your uh, spiritual thing going on. And it's posing with its hands like this and the legs crossed in that meditation pose, which we would consider when my day, we called it part of the new age movement, which we'll talk about in the church that did teach and did train. It was part of the new age movement, but it also stems out of the Eastern religions which we're going to get into. I'm going to get into that because that's not the only one. So that was situation number one. Situation number two, another friend of mine who may watch this, she's like a sister to me, love her dearly. I don't want you to get upset because I know sometimes you get pissed off about stuff, but I don't care. I got a minister right now, okay? I got a minister and preferably you'll get something from this too. She did an email to me, which was in good intent. It, honestly, I already know what her intent was, was good. I'm not reading the email or the email or text message verbatim. It was supposed to be something motivational when I got up. No, Regina, this isn't you. And <laughs> you should know it's not you when I say what I got to say because Regina sends me motivational stuff when I get up in the morning sometimes. And she's the one that does our devotional. I'll get that out later today. I posted late, late tonight. So her said, in essence, I'm summing it up. It said uh, something about prayers and blessings and to, for me, to, for me, meaning for me, to pray that God would release my natural psychic, I want you to word psychic, ability. Issue number two. Psychic is never associated with Christianity. It is a, and for those of you, believe what you want to believe, I got to just speak word. It's demonic. It falls under, for us, demons, idolatry, and dealing with non-godly spirit stuff. This is falls in the demonic category. Again, new age um, religion thing and tapping into spiritual stuff you don't want to get into. Psychic, okay? That goes over here in that category with the other ones. So we got the, the, the chakras <laughs> and the meditation yoga pose with all of the chakras in the little spiritual form. Then we got the word psychic and trying to put God associated and for me to pray for my natural quote unquote psychic ability. Psychic is demonic. That's 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 Satan stuff, okay? 
All right. The final one, and he may watch this, and you know I got love for you, you my boy, was the conversation. So I'll kind of get in this a little deeper. I had mentioned to him about a relative, and that relative took one of their children outside of the home into a very open public area in order to spend time with their child. The intention was good. And I get that. <laughs> and when I read it, I had shared with my friend, this gentleman that I'm very close to, and I said, he should know better. He was raised up Christian. He should know not to be doing this, not to take this child out here into this. He should know. And so my friend proceeded to tell me, this has nothing to do with Christianity. This doesn't have to do with God. <laughs> Y'all follow the bouncing ball of this conversation because we also are changing the Bible study from teaching on Acts to going to the book of Hosea. So I believe God directed me here because... The Acts thing, I think, was more for me because there are some things I have that God has directed me to read some things in Acts. But intently directed me here, and I ended up in the book of Hosea, which I honestly, I've read, I told you, I haven't read the entire Bible front to back. I've read quite a bit of it, though. Hosea was one of the books I haven't fully read. I've used it for reference material, but I had never really jumped into Hosea until getting into this here. Now, this all has happened over the last week. Everything I gave you happened within the last week. Uh, the change in the icon happened maybe, well, within about a week and a half to two weeks ago. The email or the text message about the psychic thing happened within the last week. And then the conversation about this isn't anything to do with God happened in the last day or two. Okay. So all three things, and this morning while I was sitting having my morning constitution, let me go into the bathroom doing the morning cleanse. I'm real, y'all. I don't, I don't, I don't fake. I was sitting there pondering it, and it bothered me. It's bothered me all weekend how to deal with this, how to how to reach on this subject. And I had three direct things that all told me this. And the scripture came up while I was sitting in the throne room. It is in the book of Hosea, chapter four, and I put it on my screen. Internet song. And if I could tell the testimony on that, it would blow y'all back. But anyway, um, in chapter 4, verse 6, we quote this as Christians all the time. We quote it all the time. And I've gone and done a little study on this. And the depth of, of this whole chapter, I read the whole chapter. The depth of this whole chapter was so poetic to the times we're in right now that I said, Lord, this is where you directed me. And it was like there was a piece about it. And everything in me says, this is the book we're going to be teaching out of. So we'll get to that later. I'm not teaching it today. We're going to start it hopefully next Tuesday. I still got to figure out if I type up uh, an outline, how to get that to you guys. Um, I'll try to figure that out. If anybody knows how I can post documents that can be downloaded by other people, let me know. I don't have a website yet, and that's some stuff. I don't know if God is going to have me do that because... We could actually post this on websites, and I know you can hyperlink off website documents. So I'm going to work on some stuff. I got some stuff to work on. Y'all just bear with me. So this is a scripture that is quoted so many times by Christian folks. And it's quoted, it is to the Christian people in the church, is how it's quoted. But what's behind it is deeper. So... It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will. I also will forget your children. So I went back. I read the whole entire thing from the, the, the just the, the whole chapter four, which I recommend everybody go read. Um. First of all, this particular thing, we normally take it out of context. We read this. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we stop there. We don't, we don't read it in its entirety. But it says, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being my priest or being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget, I also will forget your children. So I'm gonna say this. And I'm, again, probably quoting it out of context. The Bible tells us that the word is a double-edged sword. It cuts, and the best way I can do it in layman's terms, it cuts two ways. So while I do believe this is to 
believers, and I say believers because the context in which this was written was to Hebrews and Gentiles back then. Gentiles would be those who started up to be of the faith, who were believers in Christ. So it was it was written to them. Um, and I, again, I'm not going to teach it to the level I want to teach it. I'm going to use it for this subject right now. Okay. So it's deeper than what it says, but it deals with the fact that, and I'm just going to say this right now. We have not as ministers, not all, but quite a few, we have not taught you. Number one, we have not taught the believers. And I got people who aren't Christian who are going to watch this, who need information. We have not taught you. And so therefore, like a, like a lot of our public right now, we have a society of people that only capture the headlines, the pieces. And so therefore, it would be like me bringing a puzzle in here. Not my, as a little girl, my aunt, when I would go down for the summer, my mother's sister, I would go down and stay in Tucson with her and she would get this puzzle and we would put the puzzle together. It was a project. Actually, it was kind of fun. Now I think about it, I miss those times. And we would throw the puzzles out and we'd put it together. And it would be a project for us. Some people are really into puzzles and they take the puzzle once they put it together and they actually glue it onto a board and then they frame it. It's, 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 it's a project. It's an accomplishment. It, it helps with your brain thinking, identifying, matching, so forth. So very much so what we're doing here biblically. So because people are not taught, we can fall for anything. Okay. And because people are not taught spiritually in our world today, we think anything that we consider spiritual, that's why I'm very clear when people say, oh, you're spiritual, spiritual in what, what sense? In what sense? Yes, I have strong spiritual Christian views. I am spiritual in my Christianity. But when you say spiritual, you could mean I accept any and everything. And that is not the case. I have a line in the sand. So in that, when you say I'm spiritual, I do not accept that unless you preface she is Christian and is very driven by her Christian spiritual views. That I agree. I agree with that. But I need you to declare what spirit I'm dealing with because sometimes we can be dealing with spirits that are not Christian and that means they're demonic. Okay, so you are of your father, the devil, or you are of your father, God. One of the two. These are the two entities in Christendom we believe that rule in this world, okay? Or, or that have impact in the world that we live in. So this right here, when we talk about it, it's dealing with the priest. The priest would be representative of your ministers of today, okay? And the children here would be representative of people that you minister to, <laughs> So there gonna be some blood on hands. Again, we're gonna teach this later. I ain't got time to teach it now because I'm just trying to get to a point. And I don't want to be here all day for y'all because I know your attention span is this small. So Lord, I pray that this goes to the people it's supposed to reach. Number one. Number two. Number two. Um, I pray that they can hear me. And I pray that you would get in here and read this for yourself because there's some depth in here. The young lady, she put the thing up. To, oh, it's just chakras. It's it, no big deal. No, 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 homie. It's a big deal. So story time, y'all. Back when we switched churches, I, we switched churches years ago when I was a kid, when I first really came into growing in Christ around the age of 13. And we went to a little Assembly of God church and it taught a lot. And back in the day also when Christian TV came out, they had people that would get on there and really teach you as well. And there was a keen understanding back then they talked about or talked against the New Age belief system. Now, New Age encompassed a whole bunch of stuff. You had people who were into meditation. You had people that was into yoga. You had people that were into uh, believing that you could believe in all these different religions, God, Buddha, uh, Wicca, uh, every religion together, all was all good. It's all good. It's okay. It's all good. But when you go back to the Old Testament and you look at God fighting, well, I'm going to say fighting. Yeah, fighting with his folk, fighting with us as believers, not to allow certain things to integrate into 
their lives because he knew it would confuse and it would bring in spiritual things that should not be in your life. Number one, okay? There are things that we do. There are things and events that we have happen that we cannot ingest spiritually. Let me use a recent example of something. So the president got up, Trump got up and he told us about these possible malaria drugs that would be uh, possibly a help during this virus issue, okay? Here in my home state of Arizona, a couple decided we have some chloroquine or whatever they call this drug. Let's take it as a preventative so that we don't get the coronavirus. Okay, again, listening to sound bites and reacting, taking in stuff that you shouldn't take and how it can impact you. Now, what you don't understand is chloroquine has other stuff to it, okay? There's different versions of chloroquine, and there's one, I hope I'm saying the drug right, that is actually meant for koi fish, okay? Koi fish. Instead of going to the right source to know what medication they should take, they then took in the fact that it all is the same. It is not. It is not. So this husband and wife here in the state of Arizona, my home state, y'all can go look in the news. They ingested the medicine with the same title that is for koi fish. The husband is dead and the wife is in critical condition. That's in the physical realm. Let's go to the spiritual realm. So you have decided to invite some stuff into your spiritual world. You've decided because of a lack of knowledge because ministers aren't teaching you. And also, I'm going to put some onus on you. I work in a company right now where people have what's called a CDL. That means you're a truck driver. I drive, you know, I drove trucks and now I'm working in the office of it. And I got people that call me who don't know how to do their job. I'm, I'm really just shocked at the level of people who get a CDL, they know how to drive forward, possibly know how to back, but everything else to go with what you're supposed to do as a driver, they have no clue. The hours, how long they're supposed to drive, how to read the hours, how to read the, the disc, they, they got no clue. I sit on the phone at night, hand-holding and babysitting folk who don't know how to do their core fundamental job. I, I get while I'm there for other stuff, but when I have to explain to you your hours of service, when I have to explain to you how to read your dispatch, when I have to tell you how to figure out how to find an address, that's just a standard truck driving job. That's just your job. But you've been doing this for months, sometimes even years, and you calling me to get. I didn't spend this much time when I drove a truck on the line with my driver manager. I didn't want to talk to my driver manager half the time. And when I did talk to her, it was real kind of cute, funny, whatever. And I'm out and it had to be something I really was crazy. Other than that, I didn't really want to be on the phone with that woman all day. Actually, I didn't like talking to most dispatch. I love the solitude of being in my truck. And y'all, I told y'all my allergies are kicking. Mm. So anyway, this couple, they took this medicine and one is dead, one is in critical condition. I haven't actually followed up with what happened with the wife. She was alert enough to tell them what she did. And it's because she watched president mention this drug and they had a version of this drug, a version of this drug, that's a word, Lord, a version of this drug, and they took it. And the version they had of the drug was poison. Let me explain something to y'all. I told y'all in the last video, there's nothing new under the sun. If you have been taught even the simplest things about Christianity, one of which is even if we get to the temptation of Christ, that the enemy used God's own word, twisted, in order to try to confuse, manipulate, deceive Christ. He did. Yes, he did. I grew up with a saying, the enemy knows the word just as well. He, know, he knows his word. He was a high angel. See, I don't know about him because, again, lack of knowledge. We got a generation of people who may not know that Satan is a fallen angel from God. They, they may not know that. They may not know that. So he has tactics based on the fact that he has firsthand knowledge of how spiritual things work in God's realm. And so he will come down to this realm. And in order to take as many of us with him into hell where he's going, he will twist up the word. 
He will infiltrate areas that he can to kill, steal, and destroy. That's actually Bible too. I ain't got that scripture with me right now, but y'all can go research it by Googling it. I'm just saying. That is his goal. That's his fundamental principle. He is here to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants to steal you away from God. He wants to kill you because he doesn't want you to have God's love and favor. And he wants to take some company with him into hell. So he's got to destroy you. And so he is on those are his three aims in his existence and while he is freely roaming right now. Those are his goals. And with him are his follow fellow angels that fail with him in his foolishness. Okay. So they are after you. So I'm coming to you with some wisdom and some learning because we're perishing because we don't know. Okay. We're perishing because we don't know. These people did not know. They took a snippet of information, had something in their house, and they ingested it. There are so many of you out there who, well, it's spiritual. You don't want to take the time to crack your own Bible, number one. To get in here and read it for yourself, number two. You trust in folks with stuff, number three. And number four, you lean into your own understanding, which gets us into a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> the Bible tells you, lean not unto your own understanding. Had these people went to their doctor and talked to them before or called a doctor, told him what him or her what they were going to do, the doctor could have said, whoa, you ingesting the wrong stuff. So I'm saying to you, whoa, as a minister, y'all ingesting the wrong stuff. First of all, you can research for yourself. I want you to go and see where yoga originates from. Yoga originates from the East. It was part of like your Hindu, Buddhist, those religions which do not line up with Christianity. Matter of fact, Christianity feels it is a a, a, a basically it's a demonic religion. It's and God forgive me. I know I got some. Well, no, God forgive me myself. For, for those of you who are offended, sorry you're offended, but I'm going to offend, okay? And I have friends who are Buddhist practicing, okay? For me, it does not line up with my Christianity. It doesn't line up with my belief system. I will respect that that is what you believe in, but for me, I do not believe in it. And based on Christian fundamental principles, we consider it demonic. Anything that is outside of the Christian faith, when you're adding books, when you're adding principles that do not line up, when you're adding religious stuff, other gods that rule your religions, that is, that's, that's some Satan stuff. That's some part of his Lucifer. That's part of his stuff. When you get into what we have allowed to happen, what we have infiltrated, in, and the enemy is smart on how he does stuff. So yoga, for example, it's a health thing. It helps you with stretching and exercise. And what happened was we're, you got people in there doing the ohms and the yums and the ahs and the words and whatever else they're supposed to do. And you're ingesting a poison pill. You're ingesting things spiritually and you're opening yourself up for other spiritual things to come into your life. Okay. When you use the word psychic. Psychic is supposed to be a demonic form of prophetic. It ain't got nothing to do with God stuff. See, what you say to me is pray that God would give you discernment and give you prophetic wisdom. But when you tell me you want me to pray for God to give me psychic ability, no, 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 that's demonic. Because that psychic stuff, go research it in conjunction with Christianity. And again, who is the father of that? The father of that is Lucifer, Satan, the fallen angel. Yes, it is him. So you got people that said, oh, I'm talking to the dead. No, no, no. I got a Christian child of mine out in Lubbock, Texas. And she'll say to me, because I can call and the Lord will show me something. And I'll tell her something. And she go and I tell her. Well, she's supposed to be Christian, but there's some things. I love you, but I know there's some stuff you ain't walking in in Christendom in your household because there should be some wedding rings. I'm just saying, y'all been together too long. I'm going there. Okay, I'm going there. You got children. <laughs> you done waited. I need to know why you're not married after all these years. And I'm talking an official marriage, not, oh, we're together this long 
And this is, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm getting ready to go here because we got to deal with our stuff. We got to deal with it. All of it. I'm dealing with some stuff on my own right now. On my own. We should be in reflective time of where we're out of order because some, a lot of what's going on right now, notice we all alone gathered in a house, isolated away from other people because daddy A needs to deal with us. And also we need to interact in our household. If you got children and spouses, should be spouses with a wedding ring in that household, we need to deal with our stuff. We need to have some reflective moments. And when that happens, oftentimes it's in isolation. There's a reason they spent 40 years in the desert, not going into a promised land. I'm going to say not isolated in the sense of isolated from each other, but God needed to root some stuff out. So right now, this is some rooting some stuff out time. Okay, I'm just saying. And so we're going to deal on the knowledge level. Okay, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. We take it out of context. It's much bigger because this scripture gets into how disobedient we are, how uh, we have turned our entire, not, and then there's one part where it references, it says, you didn't turn your face. See, turning your face means I'm mad. I'm mad at you. I don't want to talk to you. And then I'm going to come back and talk to you again. But when you turn around and turn your whole back, that means you are cut off. You dismiss. I don't want nothing to do with you. There's some stuff in here about that. We're going to get into that when I talk about this in the Bible study later. So we are perishing for a lack of knowledge. The Bible even tells us that there's a generation during this time frame that's going to be an extremely knowledgeable generation, but have no knowledge or relationship with him because we haven't taught it. We haven't taught it in the homes. We haven't taught it in our church. Therefore, you're perishing because you're allowing stuff to come in. You're easily deceived and you're like lambs to the slaughter. And matter of fact, there's a later scripture in here, and I'm not going to try to find it right now where it talks about the lambs being released to forage. Now, what that means is that Usually, if you're a farmer, if you're a farmer, if you can, I'll, go, I'll tell y'all, I'm very analytical, so I go back and research what I'm curious about. And I also just know, if you're a farmer, you see the cowboys, they, they ride along with the cow, whatever, whatever animal it is. Usually, he says lambs. So, little lambs, they go along, and they usually have an area where they eat, and they have area of fencing. Uh, they may have some dogs out there that help herd them. The owner may have ways of hurt them, and he, he puts feed out for them. He puts food out for them. He, he, he covers them. He protects them. He's doing everything he can to protect his lambs. He's trying to protect his lambs, his sheep, his lambs. But this says, I'm going to let you go on out and forage on your own. Coronavirus right now, right? We're going to get into that later. So I'm going to let you go on. I'm going to take my hands off you. And I'm going to let you forage on your own. What that means is I'm going to let you go out beyond the protection. I'm going to let you go and get your own food. You, you work it out. You figure it out. Since you got this, you got this. I'm going to let you work it out on your own. And let's see how that works out for you. So I leave you available to predators. If we perish for a lack of knowledge, it's because we chose to leave the herd. And if we choose at a point, if we're a disobedient or whatever child or lamb, there's a point where the farmer could say, man, this little lamb right here, he's the hotness. She's the hotness. They won't listen. You know what? The other lambs are good. I'm going to take care of them. And I'm just going to leave them. But see, God, he's just so merciful. He usually comes for us eventually. And actually, we end up calling for him to help us anyway. But there's times when he has to lift his hands off and he lets you forage. And sometimes if you still refuse to bow that knee, then you're going to succumb to the enemy. And a lot of you want to just do it your way. And you don't want to learn. You don't want to receive. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray. You don't want to take the time out. And therefore, you perish for a lack of knowledge because you ingest and bring things into your life and into your home that is not biblical. And you have spirits running around inside you, inside your house, inside your situation and your circumstances because you are unwilling to change. Some of it is out of pure ignorance, but ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance can get you dead. 
the ignorance of taking a drug that you, not a pharmacist, not a doctor, and you ingest something because you heard a headline, because you had something with a similar name. Oh, it's spiritual. The, the, the similar attitude is that, well, God is, this Christianity is a spiritual thing. Okay. Satanism is a spiritual thing too. I'm just saying. Buddhism is a spiritual thing. I'm just saying. Two different religions, two different viewpoints. Hinduism is a spiritual thing. I'm just saying. Being other religions is a spiritual thing. What do you believe? You got to stand on one premise. Christianity is a one premise. We are not an all religion thing. We actually believe that there is going to one day be an all religion thing. And that's going to be under the control of somebody called the Antichrist. We'll get into that way down the line. But people will perish because they're ignorant. They don't even know that's coming. They're, they're ignorant of it, especially this newer generation, because they haven't been raised in church. And church changed from the church that I grew up in. Even fundamental basic Christianity is not taught anymore. In most churches, I ain't gonna say in a lot of churches, I ain't gonna say all. Oh, there's still a remnant. Praise God for the remnant. There's still a remnant that's teaching. But more than all, most churches are teaching about being here. They're not talking about glory. And I'm not trying to say, and I, I wanna say this when I when I say this. The other day I watched a sermon, um, my niece, play niece. I joined their church service yesterday for the virtual church service. And when you go and pray in faith for people, which I've done, sometimes they will die. And we will look at that as, oh, okay, well, Lord, you didn't heal them like it. Honey, the ultimate healing is on the other side of glory because God told me I'm going to have a body that will not be corruptible. I ain't got to worry about it being fat. I ain't got to worry about it being thin or over, under thin. I ain't got to worry about it being sick. I will have a transformed body. Everything changes on the other side of glory. Once this spirit leaves this body, spirit and soul, go see the Lord. When he says good well done, good and faithful service, I get a new, I get a new. All this is new. And it's not corrupted by the things that are corruptible, age and death and all that at that point, because I, I made it through my I made it through my test. And I also didn't perish because I tried to keep the enemy out of my life. Now, is that possible to keep Satan out? 100%. I'm going to say this. He always going to be trying something. He always going to be trying shenanigans because his ultimate goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. It's going to be a constant battle. If he came after Christ all the time, either through the Pharisees and the Sadducees, through other folks, through temptations, through all sorts of stuff. If he came to him. And that's my Lord and my Savior. What more am I going to have to go through? I'm going to have to go through some of the similar things. What I have to do is become knowledgeable on how to stand against the wiles of the devil. And part of it is knowledge. When I told my friend, oh, that, that's not Christianity. And I'm telling him, you know, that, you know, it had nothing to do with Christianity. You, you know, the reason this family member did this is they just, you know, they're caught up in possibly the politics that some people are telling them it's not a big deal, yada, yada, yada. Let me help you with something. If you are a believer in this hour and you are knowledgeable in this hour, you should be able to know this is window dressing for future events that are going to probably come within the next 10 years. Okay. If that, if we have that, you should know right now, this is the I call it the window dressing. This is when the play starts and you guys practice and you want to see how things are orchestrated. But it's also something to me. It's a wake up to the church. Get your house in order and start ministering this word because this is the last ditch effort before I sound my trumpets. And for Christians who know the word, you'll understand the sound of the trumpets and what I mean by that. If you don't, y'all go research it. We'll talk about that later too. Lack of knowledge means I'm so ill-equipped, so non-understanding of things that I'm living this life ignorantly. Some of y'all are living this life and you're in relationships where y'all should be married. I'm going to go there. You having kids, you having babies, you having this calling this, 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 my, and we use this word now. Again, this is enemy. That's my wifey. 
That's my husband. You know, that and, and not married, not married. Or living under the term fiance for 20 years and living as if you married. I'm not telling you something. I'm not talking about you, me. I'm a product of that. My mother and father were never married. I'm what we consider a bastardized child. We no longer see that as a problem anymore. We can have tons of kids out of what we call wedlock, meaning unwed, unwed children that are born without the parents being married. And there's issues with that too. We don't understand the spiritual ramifications of things. So we ingest anything. My friend did not think, oh, well, your family member, they're just not serious about it. And I'm trying to explain to him. If he is biblically trained, he should know about what took place in the Old Testament to know quarantining was required then. As a matter of fact, before the exodus happened in Egypt, they were told to go into their homes, put blood on the doorposts. It's talking about the Passover, which is coming up, y'all. It's coming up. I got my lamb in the refrigerator. Put blood on the doorposts which was, it's a representation of Christ covering us, the blood, the blood, Jesus shed his blood for us. That's our blood on our doorposts. Put the blood on the doorpost, take your behind in your house and shut the door. It was a protector for you to avoid plague, avoid the death angel for coming for you. But we got Christians who walking out here, some of y'all still gathering on Sunday out of out of ignorance and oh God, let me, oh Lord, I'm going to say something and I'm going to take this not fully in the way it's meant, but again, the word cuts two ways. Render under the Caesar what's Caesar and under God's what's God's. Caesar has told you to take your behind in your house and to stay there. Only come out if necessary. Walking through the park, not necessary. Not necessary. Uh, doing all this stuff, riding down the street, doing, not necessary, not necessary. Right now, in this, I got five million things in this house I can do up until this is probably over. And even once I get everything done in this house, I can sit down and spend some time with the Lord. That can take a long time. That could be a day. Most of y'all ain't done that in a year. Understanding, we have this computer at our disposal. I get on here and research a bunch of Christian information and get some understanding, some spiritual wisdom. I got things and, and things I could go out here and look for to get an understanding and some guidelines. But taking me and my children outside of the realm of, of this, which is supposed to be safety, out of my house where I done spoke the blood on the doorpost. Follow me, people. Follow me. Is foolishness and craziness. The same as ingesting a drug that you're not licensed to prescribe that was made for some fish because you heard a sound bite. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is deadly, especially in spiritual things, but we just saw it in physical things too. You inviting spiritual stuff in from an Eastern religion into your spirit chakras. You're going to sit here and invite demonic spirits in because you messing with stuff you don't know. Because it looks cool. Come on, y'all. Because it's interesting. Because somebody told you that's how you're going to get your peace. Come on, y'all. I watched the Red Table the other day. One of the, one of the people they have, he is a former monk, like a Buddhist monk or whatever. And I watched him put his hand on there, breathe in, breathe out, think this, think that. You opening yourself up for some stuff. If you don't know my Bible, the phone sitting on my Bible, your word and your relationship with the Lord. If you don't understand who the enemy is, and unfortunately I get back and I'm going to put it on the onus of here it calls it the priest. Because the priests really represent, and priests usually were male in that term frame, but priests represent your ministers, and ministers would be like fathers to children. The children would be those people that we teach in the house of worship, the people who are believers in the church. And in this case, 
he admonished, he, he basically, let me say admonish, so I think admonish is the word I'm looking for. He disciplines and speaks against them. And then he talks about what's going to happen to the children. I will forget your children. You don't want God to forget you. You, you don't want God to say, I forget you. You, 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 you know, man, it's like this. We say, man, forget you. Young, forget you. That means you're dismissed. That means I ain't got nothing to do with you. That means if you need something for me, from me, I look, go take your butt on, take your tail on. I'm done. I will forget your children. I'll forget the people you're ministering to. And trust me, that blood is going to be on the hands of some ministers for not training this word. If they are called, we have wanted to tell people the tickling things, the things that make them feel good. I'm going to tell you how to get a car and how to put some more money in the plate to get a house and a crib. But I'm not training you how to stand in spiritual warfare and spiritual times. I'm not telling you how to be discerning. I'm not teaching you that some of the stuff that's out here you aren't supposed to ingest. A friend of mine's mother had a saying. She said, I'm not raising you for myself. I'm raising you for this world that preaches. And I'm going to say this as ministers, we should not be raising people for ourselves to get money in the coffers, to have the big churches, um, to feel important. We should be raising them so they can succeed in making it through the journey in this world, finishing their race and raise them to make it into glory. If you are raising them in the sense that we're doing for the world, it's not a good thing. Now, when she said that as a mother, what she's saying is, I'm trying to give you the tools to make it through this life successfully because I know what you're up against in this world. That's what she's saying. We're not doing that as ministers. We're not teaching, and I'm saying we, I'm going to put myself in that. We're not teaching people. A lot of things that are happening in Christendom right now is because we ourselves have gotten so far away from truth, from facts, from the spirit of God, from being humbled before him. We have. We also don't take the time out to research, to go in here and to share with people. And we also are trying to be so politically correct that we won't tell truth. I just had to tell truth to people. I got people I love who are Buddhists. They cool, love in a sense of as friends, cool people. But when it comes down to them being Buddhist, I don't want to go to your church. I don't believe what you believe. I'm going to pray for you because I, I think you're walking in delusion. And you might think I'm walking in delusion. Do what you do. But I'm pretty sure you're walking in delusion. I, I got associates of mine that are part of other religions that may think they're Christian. I'm going to pray for y'all too. You adding books. You adding philosophies. Yesterday I was on the phone with a, with a, a driver who was Christian. He's a believer. And the man in his truck was, was Muslim. And he said, this is what the man told him, your Jesus is coming soon. Because even the Muslim, who we don't agree with Christian-wise, Muslims and Christians, we two different religions. We got two different belief systems. It doesn't, it doesn't mesh up with what we have. Now, there's some historical context to the association based on our Jewish roots. But it still don't line up. So I'm sorry, I, I can't have you infiltrate my world. Now, if you study in order to teach it, to teach people what to avoid or to teach them the differences, you may be called to that. That's a whole nother ball game. But when you think you can incorporate the Muslim and the Christian, and it's okay because it's all God. Poison is the trick of the enemy. Go back and read. You can go back. God, there's four different gospels in here and go read about the temptation of Christ. Go read how the enemy sat there and told Christ who is God in flesh. So he's a portion of God that come down in the flesh suit in order to save us and experience what we experience so that he can even show us more mercy. Go read it. 
Go read when the enemy told him, if, if you do this and you dash your foot again, then God will do this, this, and this. And Christ had to come back with the word and correct him. And what that showed us was how the enemy will twist things up. So he'll make chakras seem normal. He'll tell you that psychic is the same as prophetic. It is not. It's where it originates from, and it originates from a demonic place. He'll tell you that meditation, meditation is used in the Bible, but it's not in the same context as the meditation with the chakras and the yoga and the ohms. And the, it, it ain't that. It's something totally different. Okay? And it's also what spirits is tied to. Y'all, y'all. This also talks about, when it gets in here, it's going to talk about idols and things that folks have brought in and why they turn their back on God. And let me help you with something. I'm going to close this out. Oftentimes, we want to accept the poison because it gives us leeway to continue in our sinful nature. So it gives me leeway to not correct my behavior. It gives me, and I'm, I've done it in the past. Don't Y'all don't even know. I will tell you. There's stuff I've done in the past. I re was about to go the whole new age way because it leaves ability for me to do what I want to do as a human, whereas the Bible sets forth rules and regulations for me to get into the kingdom. So why not take an easier religion, an easier way out? Because if I accept this, that, and the other thing, I can still be actively gay. I can still be transgender. I can still um, sit up here and go out and get drunk. I can still be in a relationship with somebody I ain't married to, shacked up in a house. Because God is telling me that I'm supposed to live one way. But if I accept this and loosen it up, then I can live my life according to what I want, how I want to, in a fashion that may not line up with God, and I'm going to make it look pretty, and it makes it comfortable for me. And what you are doing is ingesting the poison pill. It may be spiritual, but it's not of the God of the Bible. It's not of that God. And when it comes down to the judgment and what we call the judgment where you stand before God and account for your sins, I always say this. We don't live this life to prove to God anything. We live it so that when we stand before him, we don't have an argument. We want to make our sinful nature convenient. So if we take on all these other things and we say it's positive, it's just like, Somebody say, well, I know, you know, that person isn't a bad person. They don't do bad things. They're good people. I got a friend of mine, a very good hearted person, but I don't believe he's Christian. If there isn't that fundamental, sincere, turn and change, walking it out, fruit evidence from your life that you are changing, I ain't saying perfect. But you changing, that you walking it, you struggling it, you running the race, and you trying to stay in stride with your Christian walk. If that isn't showing, even though you could be the sweetest person on this planet, a good person, they're going to be some good people that have no relationship with Christ that are going to bust hell wide open. Did very good things. Weren't bad people. Weren't evil. They're going to bust hell wide open. I got a lot of friends. I got some friends around me. They're not mean people. They go through this life every day. Ordinary Joes. And I don't mean that because my buddy's Joe. But ordinary Joes. Ordinary Janes. Ordinary Johnnies. And just going through this life every day. Good people. And they do chakras. They're a good person. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just get up every morning, put their shoes on, clothes on, go to work, pay their bills, come home. They might not cuss. They might not swear. They might not do anything on that level. Although they sinful in their own way because we all sin. We all sin in some form or fashion. It's the nature of humans. Even the Christians, we sin. Yes, we do. And they're going about their day. Not a bad person. Good-hearted person. Donate time. Volunteer. 
But if they don't ever bow to knee, don't never accept him as Savior, accept him as Lord of their life, even though they've done good things in his life, by biblical accounts and by the word as it's written, they are going to go to a hell. We have to come into relationship and we must let him Lord over our life. That doesn't mean it's evil. It's not going to be necessary. Easy. I'm not going to tell you become Christian. It's a bed of roses because it may become more hard because when the enemy loses somebody, something, he wants to go after him even harder, kill, steal, destroy. That's his pattern. He wants to take as many humans as he can because he knows God loves us. And it's really his way of throwing his punch. I usually tell people that if I get in a fight, I'm a win, lose, or draw sister. That means win, lose, or draw. I'm trying... Look, you're going to feel me when it's over with. If we get into a physical fight, I'm one who will admit I might get beat. But I'm going to definitely let you remember me in that fight. This is the same thing with the enemy. The enemy is going to go after everything and everybody he can. And his goal is to kill, steal, destroy. And a lot of y'all are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A, because you have not been taught in the house of God. I'm sorry for that. I apologize for the ministers who are truly called. Not the false ones. The ones who are truly called, who have gotten caught up in the themselves, have been caught up in doctrinal uh, training and or uh, teaching based on tickling of ears in order to put money in their pocket. I apologize and I hope they repent. They need to repent and turn and begin to teach. Seek out Daddy God's face and train your people up. I'm just saying. Because we're coming up on the time. And when you stand before him, not only are you going to answer for yourself, you're going to answer for these children that you didn't teach that submitted under you trying to train the doctrine. You're going to be just like some Pharisees and Sadducees that's going to stand before him and woe be unto you with that conversation. I'm just saying. Anyway, I don't want to make this long, but I do want to say, be careful what you ingest spiritually. Be careful on what you take on board spiritually. Back in the day, we talked about games like Dungeons and Dragons, Satanic. Be careful what we ingest in. I sat here just a little bit ago. I'm watching, I'm doing my, I love Star, I love sci-fi. So I'm doing the Star Trek Discovery and I went back to see season two because season three is about to be released. And I just saw something that disturbed me in one of the episodes because we have become so far away that even now they're infiltrating my shows with immoral sexual stuff that is just insanity. They got this term now, pansexual. Basically means somebody who's sleeping with every and anything. It, it's, it's insanity uh, that this has now become okay in our world. And so, and I want to say this, even though, and I, y'all know, some of y'all know my past. Even though I got friends in all different walks of this life, you may be friends, associates of mine. If you walk it in a way that's outside of God, I'm going to be honest about it. I still love you as a person. And we still got to love people as a person. We don't want to hate on them. I got associates that I know interact with me who are online who are supposedly transgendered and they're going through sex change processes. I may still interact with you. I will not agree with it. In the workplace, a lot of us have to go into workplaces now. And this again goes to render under the Caesar with Caesars. But we have to keep our mind focused on what we know spiritually, Christian-wise. This is why knowledge is important. And how we handle it spiritually. We can't go up in there with us. That's demonic and it's satanic and you're going to hell. We can't do that in the corporate because this is where we render under the Caesar with Caesars and gods with gods. When I go in the corporate arena, I cannot interact with people who are going through that and tell them that. Nor will I do that even to people outside. If God opens a dialogue, then I'll start sharing Christ and we'll start talking about the situation. And I would preface, I love you in the Lord, even though God admonishes what you're doing he this is not this this is basically what god would consider an abomination what you're doing but i do love you in the lord because my bible tells me to love my enemy as myself that means that even though or excuse me love my neighbor as myself you are a neighbor to me so therefore neighbor meaning mankind in the general does not mean your next door neighbor but another person because I'm not in the capability to judge you. And I also have to remember when I didn't know him and my own foolishness and where the enemy reigned in my life. So I have to remember those. I have to remember those from the times I was strong to the times I was backslidden 
to all the stuff. I got to remember my own foolishness before I judge somebody else. But I also know from my belief system, this does not line up with what my father wants in this life. I have to love you as a person. I have to interact with you on a professional basis and respect your process. But on the Christian side, it does not line up with my belief system. It does not line up with the Lord of my life. It does not line up with my Christian God that I believe in of the Bible. And it doesn't line up, so I'm going to pray for you. In the work environment, I may have to use he for a her and her for a he because that's what I'm told to render under Caesar's. But in my spiritual walk with the Lord as a Christian, I have to keep in my mind because God, this is what Satan wants to do. He wants to plant that as normal and it's not normal. He wants to plant, oh, they love each other, even though they in this kind of, you know, same sex relationship, whatever. That's not normal. Oh, well, it's a man and a woman together, Christians, uh, even though they're not married. That's normal. It is not normal. That is not what the father intended. He intended for us to get married. Matter of fact, our whole relationship with him later talks about a marriage supper to the lamb. That means the church is his bride. He is our groom. We are in a stage that once we all get together, we're going to go through a ceremony to do the wedding. Yep. Y'all, 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 y'all. That's why the church is known as a her. And Christ obviously is a he because that's what that's about. There's so much I could teach you and a lot I could give you right now. I don't want to give too much. But what I do want to say, be careful what you're ingesting. Just because it's spiritual don't mean it's Christian. Don't mean it's godly. And also examine your walk. Are you Christian? Or are you what they're using? I'm spiritual. Spiritual means that you can take any and everything under the sun. So how many demons is living up in you, in your household? What have you brought in? What poison pill are you taking that will kill, deal, steal, and destroy and take you right into hell? Y'all make some different choices. Be blessed. We'll be doing the Bible study. I'm gonna aim it for Tuesday. It'll be so I work four days on, twelve hours, and then three days on, twelve hours, alternate weeks. What I call my short weeks. Those are the weeks that I'll be doing the Bible studies. And that will be on Tuesday, preferably starting next week, Lord willing. Um, since we got time, y'all got time to come in here with me. If you don't know him, I need you to get to know him. I pray you get to know him. When I say him, I'm talking about the God of the Bible, the Christian God. If you don't have a Bible, you need to get one. Y'all can still order Bibles through Amazon. It ain't like toilet paper. <laughs> I'm going to recommend two Bibles for you. One of two. Either the Spirit Field. I recommend a version. I like the New King James Version. Some people go with the New International Version. I'm so so on the New International Version, but it'll work. I want you to get a version you understand. And only thing about versions is different, y'all, is that it just puts it from Elizabethan thou's, those, these, thighs into our regular English. And the New King James, they went back to the original text and broke it out because there were some things that were not properly translated or just a little bit lack of the meaning could be changed just a little bit. And I'll give an example of that much later, um, just using the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer. And how later when they went back to the scripture, well, real quick, when they went back to the scripture, it says protect us from evil in the King James Version. But if you go to the original, it says protect us from the evil one. That's that's a huge difference. It's a huge difference because when you protect us from the evil one, you automatically should be protecting us from all evil because that's his goal is to do evil stuff. So. That's some of where we start focusing different and we also begin to speak things because words have power. The Bible tells us there's power, there's life and death, death is in the power of the tongue. So words do have power and it tells us where to place our prayer life differently when we understand things in context. But I want you guys who don't know him just to say a simple prayer. 
Lord, I need to know you. I, I need to know you. I need you to show me yourself. I, I need to know your son, Jesus Christ. I, I'm, for those of you who really, I don't really even know if I really believe this is real. I know something's going on and I know this is bigger than me and I, I know it's bigger than mankind. Are you, are you really real, God? Are you really real? And if you're real, I need you to show yourself to me. And I'm going to tell you, he's going to show himself to you. Trust and believe he will. When he does show himself to you, then you say this pretty this little prayer right here. And if some of you, you already being shown, you know, but you don't know what to pray. It's simple. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, number one. I believe that he died for me, number two. I believe that he rose up, number three. I believe that you gave him all power to him, all, yeah, power over it all, number four. I know he redeemed me, number five. And I know he sits at the right hand of who you are, number six. And I know he was born of a divine birth, number seven. Forgive me, Lord. And I want to thank you for saving me. And then, unfortunately, you can't go to a church. But fortunately, you can go to church. If you can, find some online ministry that will prayerfully teach you, train you, raise you up. You can reach out to me below. I'll send you some stuff. We're in a new day. Wake up, folks. God bless you. Two and two. Peace.